Hi, I'm Dweezil Zappa, and today I'm going to show you some different flavors of Frank Zappa style guitar licks. Three of them total, and I'm going to try to break them down and make them playable for you. Uh, little chunks, small bits at a time. Are you ready? Let's start with one from Zoot Allures. Now this one is a chordal song where he uses feedback throughout most of the song, but there are a few little integral passages, and I'm going to show you just a couple of the fundamentals within this song. So it has this chord. Let's not even worry about the name of the chord. We're just going to show you where you put your fingers, but it, it sounds like this. <laughs> when you play it, so we're gonna, you could use just the open A, and you could play it like this. But sometimes I find that rings out too much, and it blocks some of the sound of the other notes, so I, I feel like I can control it better if I put my finger on the fifth fret here and hit the A note on the E string. And then you have that sound of what would be not quite the octave. So you want to be at the sixth fret on the D string, sixth fret on the G string, and you notice I'm using my second finger up here for the root, my third for the D string note, and my pinky for the G string note. And then you have your first finger at the fourth fret, and the open E. So you have that kind of sound, and then the, the actual melodic passage from the song is... That's that chordal part right there. And then you switch to the next chord. You hit this chord twice. And this one, you bar your fingers all the way across these, uh, uh, from the A string down to the high E string. And we're here on the sixth fret. So it's the A string, D string, G string. Then you put your second finger here on the seventh fret, but your finger that's barred across on the sixth fret allows you to hear that high note. So it's not just straight across, you have that one note in there. Right, so the whole phrase. That's one of the classic parts of Zoodalures. The part that comes right after that, I wanna show you next. This is one that people always ask about because it's, it's an interesting lick and it, it sort of just is a surprise feature that comes out of nowhere. So that's really like, my dad had a phrase of, uh, where he said, you gotta put the eyebrows on it. That's the eyebrows chord right there. Especially after that lick. So if you tried to play the whole thing, You gotta have that D string ringing though. So that is how you play some of the hard parts in Zootalures. The next lick I'd like to show you comes from a classic solo from a song called Uncle Remus. It's in D minor, it's uh, all pentatonic pretty much, but it's got some cool phrasing and I'll try to explain some of the little details that help make it sound more like the way my dad played it. All right, so it starts off with this phrase. Uh, so you have a little slow bend up, and that's kind of the hard thing to, to get yourself to, to work on is like hearing the pitch rise slowly but up to the right pitch. And so that phrase, again, I'll just try it one more time and play it for you and see if you can play along. So 
So that's how it starts, um, well, at least the part that I'm teaching you, that's how it starts. And then there's another tricky little thing that happens on this next lick. It's all pentatonic again, but there's a, a section of it where it's one note per string on three strings, and it involves using your pick to go across three strings in a raking motion. So let's see if I can kind of just put that part together for, for you. It goes like this. So that part that I was talking about with the raking, it's... So that right there, you can see it's one note, one note, one note, but it's three uh, notes picked in one direction. And part of what you'll have to work on is you don't necessarily want to hear them all ring at the same time like a chord. You want to be able to mute them as you go by, and that's done partially with the, the soft padding of your fingers. Like once you go from one string to the next, you kind of release the string so you don't hear it anymore. So that is the, the shape of this lick. It does this. So that part right there leads into a bend on the G string. And then the phrase ends with. So it's all together. So I have another lick for you. This one is kind of one of the blistering pentatonic speed licks that has specialized triplets in it and a little bit more of that picking that goes across the strings. Let me see if I can whip this out for you. Uh, this would have been the kind of lick that you would hear in a song like Trouble Every Day from the Roxy and Elsewhere record, but uh, something like this. So this is a all pentatonic run, but it's the way that the notes are put together, uh, the sequence of them that give it a little contour that make it sound funky and, and interesting. And the, the challenges you'll have will come from some of the picking, but then it's your choice of fingering. So when you're playing high up in the, uh, on the, the guitar neck, and, and this is in the key of F sharp, sometimes uh, people don't like to use their pinky because it's confined space. They like to use these three fingers more, but, and you can do that, but this kind of lick, it's not very helpful with that kind of fingering. So I, I prefer to use my pinky. And one thing about using your pinky when you're playing anywhere is really kind of notice where your thumb is because the higher it is up on the neck, the weaker your pinky is going to be and the slower it will be able to move. So when you really want mobility and strength from all these fingers, you want your thumb to be lower on the neck. And so be aware of it when you're trying to play this and if you're having difficulties, that may be one of the reasons. Picking, it's another one that is gonna be interesting for you. So let me try to slow this down. So right there. When you're playing it slow, you can get away with a lot of hammer-ons and not picking everything. But when you, when you learn the lick, you might be able to pick it all and you might like the sound of that. But let's just get the notes involved here. Let's get that much first. Once you have that, the next part of it, let's see if I can do it slowly. <laughs> So that's where it connects that raking across the three strings thing. That's what you want to get. And then let's see if I can remember how that phrase is supposed to end.
So one of the challenges in this is going to be the up, 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 down picking thing because it's up, up, up like you're strumming a chord in reverse, but you're playing one note per string and you're trying not to hit them all so that they sound like a chord. You want to hear them individually. Right? So up, it's like up, 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 down. And what I'm doing there, I'm not playing any of the notes, I'm just showing you what it's really gonna sound like or feel like when you're picking it. So up, 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 down. So, so just work on that transition from Just like that. Up, 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 down, and then you have this bend. So, pentatonic people, you will love this lick and you will get more ideas on how to add more of these kinds of things into your own playing. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in luck. You get a bonus lick. It's the Sweetwater bonus lick. It's a Frank Zappa reverse bend lick, and it's pretty cool. It's real short and real simple. Check it out, the key of A. So what, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your third finger and your pinky, you're gonna put them on the seventh fret, and you're gonna bend the B string and the G string together up a half step. You're gonna bend them up. And you're gonna start there without even hearing them. And then you're going to bend them back down after you hit the strings. So you first hit the A note that's on the fifth fret. And then you hit the B string and the G string on the seventh fret and you hit them separately, but then you release the bend back down so that you land on the seventh fret. So check it out. So that is how you do the reverse Frank Zappa bend. And it's your bonus lick of the day from the fine folks at Sweetwater. I hope that you have enjoyed learning some Zappa flavored pentatonic and other things. And I look forward to seeing you again in another Sweetwater video.